Welcome everyone to the weekly Facebook Q&A here on OTRS Central. You guys gave me enough questions, so once again, it's going to be two parts. This is part one. Part two will be up soon after. Easy for me to say. All right, so let's get started. Hopefully this will be a good one. Uh, Damali Williams, why do you think Abraham Lincoln put over John Wilkes Booth in 1865, or was it the right call? <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, he was probably blindsided by that decision. It was, <laughs> it was the Ford Theater screw job. <laughs> probably wasn't the right call. <laughs> Luke Wins Daily. Do you believe that Stephanie McMahon's muff smells like Slim Jims? Uh, <laughs> Probably that and cocaine. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Stephen Bradley says, WrestleMania 31 seems to be a bad show. How about you and me steal the show? You and me one-on-one -on, -one on WrestleMania. Uh, our mic skills and wrestling skills would make Ziggler and Brian look like nothing. Uh, Piznik 64 versus OTRS would steal the show. Yeah, because OTRS would be at the show. Because the Schleg Daddy would be at the show. Has nothing to do with Piznik 64 being there. How dare you compare your mic skills to mine? Please. Please. You go to Santa Clara, WrestleMania 31. You show up, you wish you'd be back in Oil City. I promise you, bro. Steal the show. Yes, because I'd be there. The fuck? Carrie and George, now that it's been a year since his departure, do you think WWE would be better shape if CM Punk stayed with the company? Uh, no, not necessarily. Like I said, you alluded to it that it was this was could have been his year to main event WrestleMania, and I agree with that, but that doesn't mean that the company itself would be in a whole lot better shape. I'm just saying. Uh, no, I don't think so at all, actually. Uh, Alia said, Johnson, does it surprise you that John Stewart, a comedian and soon-to-be former host of The Daily Show, is an absolute wrestling mark? No. Apparently, it surprised the WWE. I don't even think they knew. You know, Vince is too busy watching Fox News like every other 65-year-old white male in this country. So, there you go. It was probably news to him when he found out. Uh, and why do you believe that Delexman is a closeted muscle mark, even though he is an avid Daniel Bryan fan? It's denial. You know, he can sit there and talk all he wants about his love and affection for guys like Dolph Ziggler and Daniel Bryan, but we know at the end of the day, what oh, strokes his poke is Hulk Hogan. We have clear, indisputable visual evidence. He loves Hogan. He's a Hogan guy. That makes him a muscle mark and not a very closeted one either. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, let's see here. Nathan Cooper, do you think a program between Daniel Bryan and the heel Chris Jericho at WrestleMania 31 could have worked? No. Why? So the hardcore fans could beat off to it? For what? So that way Jericho could be in the same type of role, and then Jericho puts Brian over? No. I don't want to see that. Why would you want to see that? Just saying. Jean Carlos Vasquez Marcano. So nice, you need four names. Your thoughts on some former wrestlers from NXT accusing Bill Demott of being homophobic, racist, and a bully while training them. And should WWE fire him or not? Yes, WWE should fire him. They don't even need to do an investigation. Just fucking fire him. What does that worthless piece of shit bring to the table? You know, well, there's smoke, there's fire. My God, this is a motherfucking inferno. Enough people are talking about it. I've never understood the whole notion of when you're breaking somebody into the business, you got to bully them and belittle them and treat them like shit. Why? So we can get your rocks off, so you can get your jollies off? It's fucking stupid. Who the fuck is Bill DeMott? Seriously, who the fuck is Bill DeMott? It'd be one thing if Stone Cold Steve Austin, somebody that actually mattered, and somebody that was of some fucking consequence was treating him like that because he actually knows what it's like to be at the top. What the fuck does old Hugh Morris know? The fuck? Why the fuck is he training anybody? That fire his bum ass. I don't know why the fuck he's still there. Ellis Watson. What do you think it will take in order for WWE to finally sort their shit out? I don't know if they ever fully will sort their shit out. It's just going to be the reality we're going to have to deal with. Triple H and Stephanie fully taking over most certainly isn't going to do it because all of those that are living in a fantasy land thinking that that's going to be the case, 
Keep in mind that it's reportedly Triple H who was bigger on Roman Reigns than Vince McMahon. Keep that in mind. Number two, you'll point to NXT. Well, NXT is geared towards one certain segment of audience and one certain segment of audience alone. It doesn't necessarily mean that those things will translate well to the big level. Number three, if Stephanie McMahon would be so much better for the company than Vince McMahon, then why has the company's creative direction been such drizzling shits in recent years when she was largely in charge of it, set up the infrastructure that has run the WWE into the creative dysfunction that they fucking have? Sam Wise Kindle, what free agent should the Bears look for, and do you think it's time to let Marshall go? Well, uh, they did. <laughs> they traded him, and yes, it was time. I was surprised that they didn't get more in terms of draft pick compensation, but Marshall had to go. Any Bears fans that are of this delusion that it's bad to let him go, they were 5-11 and last year with him. They didn't make the playoffs once with him. You had to go. You had to free up cap space. You needed to get that presence out of your locker room. Um, in terms of free agents, the Bears should look for no big money marquee guys. They need to rebuild through the draft, not free agency. If they do go the free agent route, maybe the second tier guys that could play a little bit more like first tier guys in the right fit with the right system, maybe. But in terms of specific guys, I don't really know because I don't really think they should be hitting free agency very hard. They need to be all about clearing out who they can off of this team that could bring them any type of value whatsoever in terms of draft pick uh, currency, so that way they can hit this 2015 NFL draft very hard. That's what they need to be doing. Berwin Asker Vargas, do you think this is finally Michael McGillis shitty's year? I actually don't see the appeal to him. I think he's just less than mediocre. Uh, oh, no, it's not his year. I mean, he's got a little bit of a thing for a moment, but that'll be forgotten about very soon, I assure you. And it just is. Steven Jacobson, which is more important, telling a story or match quality? Well, I guess it depends on how you define match quality, because to me, a big part of match quality is telling a story. So I think overall, telling a story is more important than the actual flips and kicks, if you will, if that's how we're defining match quality. Because it's that storytelling that can make that match seem so much more, because otherwise it's just guys flipping and kicking and punching and hitting. Imagine if that flipping and kicking and punching and hitting meant something. It had consequence. It had significance. Then it means so much more. Um, Luke Wins Daily, can you actually grow a full beard? One, fuck you, and two, no, I can't. If I could, I would. Do you see this thing? Do you see this thing? This is a mustache, allegedly. Look at how shittily this is growing in. If I could grow a mustache like this, what makes you think I could grow a full beard? Oh, my Christ. Hell no. Alberto Torres, what do you think of this year's WWE Hall of Fame class? It's got the Macho Man. It'd be cool to see Rikishi. Um, kind of underwhelming. Just being honest, kind of underwhelming. Maybe there's another big domino or two to fall. Maybe a diesel back his way in. I don't know. But uh, just overall, in general, kind of underwhelming at this point in time. Uh, Lance Clearman, do you think that WWE should use the two hours of Raw to showcase the NXT talent? Um, yeah. Occasionally, maybe. Maybe let an NXT guy get a cup of coffee up there. You know, but no, not, a, not on a consistent basis. Phil Shabber, who will be the IC champion after WrestleMania? Will that person restore any prestige to it? For the way they're booking Wade Barrett, it almost makes it seem like Wade Barrett would end up retaining the title. It would only make sense. You've had him lose to everybody. You've made him of zero consequence, so why not have him retain the title? A lot of fans might fantasize about a Ziggler or Daniel Bryan having the belt, but, okay, to the idiots that sit there and believe that this would automatically improve the prestige of the belt or be something significant or something good, how many times has Dolph Ziggler been the IC champion? And what the fuck has that ever meant? Look at the fact that we're heading into WrestleMania 31, and the best thing they could come up with for Daniel Bryan was throwing him in as an afterthought into this fucking match. You really think that this would make that belt mean so much more? <sighs> exactly. Like, come on. It's stupid. It doesn't have to be the fault of a Dolph Ziggler in particular or Daniel Bryan for you to sit there and acknowledge and understand people that it's stupid. Because you know it is stupid. Oh, it'll bring back the prestige of the fact. Well, fuck you. The fuck do you know? You don't know shit if you think that. Holy Christ almighty.
Oh, it'll bring back the prestige of the belt. And this is going to happen, and that's going to happen. Ain't going to be bullshit happen, period. Ain't going to restore no goddamn prestige to a period. Kenny Ward, do you think they should get rid of the Money in the Bank pay-per-view and put the match back on WrestleMania? Yes, I would be okay with that. If we're going to have a ladder match spot fest at WrestleMania, don't have it be for the meaningless IC title. Have it be for something meaningful of significant consequence, and that is the Money in the Bank contract. And again, people, don't be fooled by the spot fest and the IC title match at WrestleMania. It's stupid. It's shit. Stop trying to be contrarian and say, oh, it'll be great because of this and that. It won't be great because of no shit. Son Goshuaku, while you probably don't like the WWE crossovers, do you or did you at one time enjoy Scooby-Doo and the Flintstones? Well, absolutely. I always enjoy Scooby-Doo and the Flintstones. It just leave it up to the WWE to do a collaborative project with them when those cartoons cease to be uh, first run over 40 years ago. When most kids' television program today isn't even cartoons, of course, leave it to the WWE to try and go after cartoons. Uh, Nick Finney, with The Miz coming out about erectile dysfunction, will he and Seth Rollins forge a bond together and tag team together? <laughs> <laughs> Nicely played, sir. I see what you did there. <laughs> what would be their tag team name? Coming up short? <laughs> <laughs> or the silly softies. <laughs> Mitch Sutherland, do you think an NXT title match should be at the very least on the pre-show of Mania? Yes, I do. If not, the uh, curtain jerker on the actual main WrestleMania show, depending on who you'd have wrestling in that match. Um, I am Brandon Burstian. Do you think DDP should be in the Hall of Fame this year or next? Yeah, you could go into the Hall of Fame whatever year. Uh, Nick Anderson, why would the Bears want to get rid of Brandon Marshall? He's the best wide receiver in team history. As I explained earlier, they went 5-11 and 11 last year. They've had one winning season in Marshall's three years there. He carried a huge cap figure. He's going to be 31. I think he is actually already 31, if I'm not mistaken. He had to go. He was toxic to that locker room. They were 5-11. and 11. This team is not contending next year and not the year after that either. They have to rebuild. These are the type of things that have to happen. Yes, I understand the theory. It sucks that Marshall is gone, but we have to get over it because it was the right thing to do. I'm a little disappointed, yes, that they didn't get more draft pick compensation for trading Brandon Marshall, but it is what it is. He still had to go. It's very easy to understand. It is. Accept it. Koya Zod, after the dialogue Roman Reigns did on Raw, I think he has improved a bit in his wrestling skills, but there are still people complaining about him. So can it be said that the haters are just simply using all this he's not ready stuff as an excuse for not wanting him to be the top guy? Maybe that's part of it, but I don't see how being able to do a dive over the top rope makes him a better wrestler either. <laughs> see where that makes a whole lot of sense. <laughs> oh, now because he can flip and kick, that makes him better. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Just means he broke out another weapon out of the repertoire, if you will. Um, yeah, I think part of it is it's just people are butthurt about Daniel Bryan, or people are just mad at WWE in general for everything and anything. So they just find Roman Reigns as a representation of a lot of what they don't like about the WWE. Part of it accurate, part of it not. So I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. Uh, v Day G. Oh. VDJ, excuse me, Omega MVP, why can't NXT wrestlers have more matches either on SmackDown or Raw? Because they're on NXT for a reason. Maybe they're not quite ready for prime time yet. And maybe that's why they're on NXT. I can understand doing it every once in a while, but you don't want to do it on a consistent basis. Uh, Everett Harding, do you think Kane should have remasked after WrestleMania 20? Wouldn't have been a bad thing. Uh, Jose Gonzalez, who would be in WWE's version of No Man? The National Organization of Men Against Amazonian Masterhood. Um... All the people running the WWE. <laughs> to make it pretty simple. Vince McMahon would be the president. Kevin Dunn would be the right hand man. <laughs> It'd be ironic. You know, Triple H would have to be involved because he'd be rebelling against marrying a McMahon and having three daughters. Be his way to get back at everybody for not having a son. <laughs> WWE's version of No Man. They live the No Man reality every day. They make sure that there's no Amazonian masterhood, damn it. So thanks to all you guys that submitted your questions for part one of this Q&A. Part two will be coming up soon, so stay